Well, folks, Warner Brothers is celebrating its 100th anniversary, which is exciting stuff. They've made some amazing movies over the past century. They've decided that to pay homage to their, their past, they're actually going to take some of those amazing movies and they are going to just turn them woke. Warner Brothers has decided to celebrate their 100th anniversary by doing something special. According to their website, the Warner Brothers Discovery Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Team, yay, DEI, all they do is produce garbage and then they slap an approved by the woke label on it. Today, they unveiled plans for a short film series that reimagines the studio's iconic films through a diverse and inclusive lens. Six filmmakers have been selected to develop and shoot 20-minute short film adaptations, bringing a modern lens to classic Warner Brothers titles. What are those titles? A Star is Born, The Adventures of Robin Hood, Calamity Jane, Jack and the Beanstalk, The Prince and the Pauper, and Rebel Without a Cause, with representative casting, storytelling, and narrative. Ooh. Have you ever wanted to see Rebel Without a Cause? Except instead of the movie starring Natalie Wood and James Dean, it stars like two gay dudes. Have you ever really wanted to see that? You want to see Rebel Without a Cause, but it's about a, a young boy's coming out of the closet story? How about The Adventures of Robin Hood, but starring a disabled little person who happens to be pansexual? It's, it's Man Marion and Big John. Have you ever wanted to see that? Well, Warner Brothers is here for you. A Star is Born. Not like the, the remake of A Star is Born that, that, you know, is similar but worse. Like a remake of the one with James Mason and, um, and Judy Garland. Except this time, it will presumably be about a couple of, of woke gay people who have decided they need to trans themselves, but that's going to undermine their career and one of them commits suicide because of the meanness of American society. A Star is Born, 2023. It, th this is about as bad an idea as you can have, mainly because what it's going to show is that old movies are really great and the new movies suck. I'm sorry to break it to you, but the new movies are garbage compared to this kind of stuff. When you're talking about like The Adventures of Robin Hood, like 1930, 1939, The Adventures of Robin Hood, Errol Flynn, Olivia de Havilland, this is maybe the greatest adventure film ever made. Fantastic score by Korngold. It's, it's like truly an amazing film. Claude Rains, it, like, it's so good. So you're going to destroy that by what? Making a remake of it, but it's going to have like Eddie Murphy in it or something? Uh, what, what, exa what exactly is the logic here? How about make something new that's good? How about that? Or how about you do what Hollywood used to do, which is you pay homage to the great old movies without, you know, putting a warning thing on the screen. It's going to be Calamity Jane, but Calamity Jane is a, is a lesbian, of course. That, 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 it, it's just amazing. We're absolutely thrilled to work with WBD's Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion team to expand opportunities for a broader range of talents to realize their dreams at Warner Brothers, said Mike DeLuca and Pam Abdi, co-chairs and CEOs, Warner Brothers Pictures Group. By the way, I'm hearing from people in Hollywood. They literally, on these sets, are hiring people who are minority to just sit in the room so that they can tell people that they have diversity, equity, and inclusion. Like, they can't find enough qualified people of particular specified intersectional check marks, so they just, like, hire people and they put them in the room so that they can say that they're doing this thing. I've also heard from people I know who have done script reading in Hollywood that you are supposed to actually give, like, extra benefits to scripts that come from particular minority authors. The featured filmmakers were selected by DEI industry veterans, including WB's senior vice president of DEI in North American, Karen Horn, in collaboration with Warner Pictures executives. I'm, I'm really excited about this. Who, who's really pumped? I, I can't wait to see, again, the Monica Moore Sarayaj Adventures of Robin Hood. Not like the Michael Curtis one, but the lady who directed Netflix's Fear Street. Cannot wait to see her version of the Adventures of Robin Hood. That's literally who's doing this, by the way. So, so pumped for this. The Asik Sadiq, Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer of Warner Brothers said, quote, the impact of Warner Brothers films over the last century has been tremendous. They've shaped our culture and our understanding of the world around us. In celebration of the studio's 100th anniversary, we are thrilled to empower these talented filmmakers to create modern and diverse reimaginings of these iconic productions. Well, this sounds like film death. This sounds just absolutely awful. Congrats to Warner Brothers on destroying their classic IP in favor of woke garbage. And we'll get to more of this in just one second. First, I woke up this morning. My kids were already yelling at me. That meant I need my coffee. Like, I need my coffee every morning. This is why I need Black Rifle Coffee. Black Rifle Coffee is fueling Americans before they go out and do epic things with their lives. Their ready-to-drink cans are crafted for quality and convenience. If you want a Spartan-level caffeine kick, try Black Rifle's ready-to-drink 300, an electrifying blend of MCT oil and amino acids that will supercharge your day. Ready to Drink 300 is packed with 300 milligrams of caffeine. Plus, it comes in a variety of delicious flavors, each combined with a large dose of Wake the Heck Up. Ready to Drink cans are an amazing grab-and-go option designed to give you the boost you need to get through your day. 
I love Black Rifle Coffee not only because their coffee is top notch, but because a portion of every sale is donated to support veterans, law enforcement, and first responders. When I buy from Black Rifle, I'm supporting the folks who keep our country safe and free. Head on over to blackriflecoffee.com. Use promo code Shapiro at checkout for 10% off your order. Again, that's blackriflecoffee.com. Use promo code Shapiro for 10% off. This is the coffee I rely on to get me through the day. You can find Black Rifle Coffee in grocery and convenience stores near you as well. Black Rifle Coffee is America's coffee. Go check them out right now. BlackRifleCoffee.com. Use promo code Shapiro. At checkout, get 10% off your order. Let's talk about the Utes. So I have several Utes in my home. I have a nine-year-old, a nearly seven-year-old, a three-year-old, one on the way. One of their favorite things to do is to have pillow fights in my room. They like to jump on my bed. I love it. It's great. Well, here's the thing. They really enjoy One of the reasons they really enjoy it is because my bed is really comfortable. One of the reasons my bed is really comfortable is because it's got those bowl and branch sheets I rely on those bowl and branch sheets, not only so that I can get a great night's sleep so that my kids can roll around in the bed and, and enjoy themselves when they're having pillow fights and, and annoying me. Bowl and branch sheets are made from the finest 100% organic cotton threads on earth. They feel buttery to the touch. They are super breathable. They are perfect for both cooler and warmer months. Their signature hem sheets were made with threads so luxurious, four U.S. presidents have slept in them. Bowl and branch sheets actually soften with every wash cycle. They're made without pesticides, formaldehyde, or other harsh chemicals. Best of all, Bowl and branch gives you a 30-night risk-free trial with free shipping and returns on all orders. You're not going to want to return them. Bowen Branch sheets, they're better than all the other sheets. I got rid of literally all the other sheets because that's how good Bowen Branch is. Get 15% off your first order today when you use promo code Shapiro at bullandbranch.com. That's bull and branch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, branch.com. Promo code Shapiro. Exclusions apply. See site for details. Rosa Delora, who is a um, representative from Connecticut who has purple hair, she, um, she was praising him for the crash. T- Apparently, a big accomplishment is that he wants to put female crash test dummies in the cars. And when, when they're testing these cars, because women's bodies react differently than men's bodies. Here she was explaining. You also plan to make important investments to uh, address the roadway safety crisis, including the critical funding that would accelerate the development. And this is an area I've, I've written to you about of the use of female uh, dummies in crash testing. This will start to fight the gender inequity among vehicle safety and crash victims. So. Um, I'm fine with this. That there should be female crash test dummies because we, we should actually, you know, know how women's bodies react to, to crashes. I just want to know why uh, Rosa DeLauro is assuming the gender of the current male crash test dummies. This is a party that does not even believe that men and women exist. So how exactly are you saying that there is a sexual dichotomy necessary so that you can actually call a, a crash test dummy female? So I, I love the tacit admission that there is, in fact, sexual dichotomy in the world and that women are not built the same as men. But you're not allowed to say that out loud. You can only say it about inanimate objects that are like mannequins. Then you're allowed to say it. So, so that's kind of funny. Uh, other things that I like today. So I have a book recommendation for you. There's a reissue of a book by George Gilder coming out called Men and Marriage. This book was written all the way back in like the early 1980s. And it's a really fascinating take on the sort of death of roles in American society and what marriage was originally designed to do. And one of the great lies of, of feminism is that marriage is a patriarchal institution. What George Gilder points out is that it absolutely is not. That basically... What men are in, in a vacuum, men have a genetic drive to go and procreate with as many women as possible, not to settle down, to go and hunt, to do all of these things, that aggressive testosterone driven male. That's what he does in a vacuum. And then a man is forced by women and nature to actually settle down and subject his drives to the living patterns of a woman. And women's drives are not nearly as peripatetic. Women's drives are largely rooted in not only procreate, but then you actually have a commitment that goes along with the procreation. And this allows men also to start planning for the future. Because if you live a peripatetic lifestyle, then you're not actually going to plan for the future. You just move from woman to woman, from place to place, all the rest of this. But if you settle down with a woman who is bearing your child, you now have to take all that aggressive energy and channel it towards civilization and the future. George Gilder correctly points out, he says, marriage is not simply a ratification of an existing love. It is the, conver- it is the conversion of that love into a biological and social continuity. Regardless of what reasons particular couples may give for getting married, the deeper evolutionary and sexual propensities explain the persistence of the institution. All sorts of superficial variations from homosexual marriage to companionate partnership may be played on the primal themes of human life, but the themes remain. The natural fulfillment of love is a child. The fantasies and projects of the childless couple may well be considered as surrogate children. In other words, it's the thing that you're building together that makes marriage worthwhile and also takes the aggressive and terrible toxic instincts of men and captures them and channels them in a proper direction. This is one of the reasons why, by the way, the average married man will earn a lot more money than the average single man, despite the fact that he has fewer costs, right? And again, this in order to understand this, you have to understand the basic difference between the male and female drives. George Gilder says this, in a world where women do not say no, 
The man is never forced to settle down and make serious choices. His sex drive, the most powerful compulsion in his life, is never used to make him part of civilization as the supporter of a family. If a woman does not force him to make a long-term commitment to marry, in general, he won't. It is maternity that requires commitment. His sex drive only demands conquest, driving him from body to body in an unsettling hunt for variety and excitement in which much of the thrill is the chase itself. The man needs to be tamed. His problem is that many young women think they have better things to do than socialize single men. And you're seeing that play out right now. It turns out that the feminist movement has basically liberated men from the thing that made them civilized in the first place. And then we wonder why there's an increase in quote unquote toxic masculinity. And by the way, what women have been liberated from is the thing that most women actually want, namely to get married and have children. It turns out the vast majority of women actually want to get married and have children and enjoy being married and having children. The book is really good. It's worth the read. George Gilder, Men in Marriage. You should pick up a copy of the uh, reissue that should be coming out shortly. Alrighty, guys, the rest of the show is continuing right now. You're not going to want to miss it. I'll be speaking with Balaj Orban. He's political director for Prime Minister Viktor Orban in Hungary. If you're not a member, become a member. Use code Shapiro at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. Click the link in the description and join us.